You guys know this, friends don't let friends buy bad cars. And on today's Ideal List, we have 10 of them. 10 hoopties I wouldn't wish upon your worst enemy. Everything from sludge machines, to cars that catch on fire, to transmissions that forget to shift. Let's freaking go. Fire, oddly enough, kind of rhymes with our first pick, the most explosive release by Pontiac yet, the Fiero, or Fiero. Seriously, this thing entered the automotive market with a bang. See, on paper, it was hot, sporty, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, with a slick shift in manual? I mean, what could we want more? Well, if it was the ability to roast marshmallows due to an engine fire, then you got the full Happy Meal because these things caught on fire way too much. Yes, the Fiero would catch on Fiero, roughly one in every 500 cars released to the public, which means GM got the publicity no automaker ever wants, having to recall all 244,000 Fieros from the wild. So, as awesome as the Fiero is on paper, it might be too hot to handle. Speaking of handles, Ford tried to get a handle on their power shift transmission, but it proved to be a bit too much. Yes, Ford had a crazy power shift problem. Ever wanted a Ford Fiesta or Focus sedan circa 2011? Well, you're in for a huge surprise. It started with good intentions, as they all do. Ford wanted to make a more efficient automatic transmission, so they set out to create a dual clutch tranny, and historically, these are wet clutches, meaning that they're greased up in oil. But to make their clutch even more efficient, they opted to create a dry clutch and ditch the lube altogether. Smart, Ford. Well, we learned from you that you gotta lube it up for optimal performance, because without it, <laughs> it created more friction, thus creating hotter temperatures, and let's just say, the tranny's performance was subpar. So bad, in fact, that there were launch judders that would vibrate the car violently while accelerating, and this was in pre-production models. Now, you'd think Ford would do something about it before they released it to the public, right? They did. They decided that it could be taken care of with warranty coverage. Not cool, Ford. So, if you know someone that owns a 2011 through 2016 Ford Fiesta or 2012 through 2016 Focus with the power shift transmission, they are entitled to some cash because Ford got sued by its customers. Yes, they actually had a settlement where Ford would buy back your car or give you $2,300 or a discount on a new car of roughly 4,600 bucks. Way to build loyal customers, Ford. And if you wanna be a loyal ideal lifestyler, upgrade your wardrobe with this ideal pocket tee that you can snag up here. It's got ideal on the front and it's got ideal on the back, so it's twice as ideal. And you can support the ideal channel while you're at it. Now, speaking of making bad decisions, this list would not be complete without a BMW. <sighs> The Germans. Although the German giants are known for their technical prowess, BMW went to bat with the N63, which was released around 2008, and let's just say that they uh, struck out big time. This motor came in vehicles like the BMW 550i, the X5, the X6, the 750i, all spendy, big, luxurious bimmers, and the power plant, the N63 was not ready for the task. Yeah, it was a big old V8, and yeah, it was turbocharged. But the snails were nestled within the V because it was a hot V, reverse flow eight cylinder layout. That's big boy terminology for a sophisticated motor ahead of its time. It was so sophisticated, in fact, that as long as you were meticulous with maintenance and never missed a service or an oil change, it would reward you with excessive oil consumption problems and fuel injection problems and sludge problems and timing problems and massive expensive to repair oil leak problems. It's got 99 problems, but the prick on the inside ain't one. The complaints got so bad that the big bosses at BMW were forced to issue a recall, but still, I still wouldn't touch that car with a 10 foot pole. Okay, okay. Question, have you ever driven a car with a powertrain that you just did not like? Let us know in the comments down below. I wanna see your horror stories because powertrains are often disliked for two main reasons. They either are A, horribly underpowered, or B, they are extremely unreliable. And this next one, it ticks both of the boxes. 
So grab your Wellis, let's play in the mud. Introducing the Sludge Machine from Chrysler. Okay, now the Sludge Machine might be a cool name for your car if you're doing the Gambler 500 or something, like our friends B is for Builds Jump a Can that was at the Gambler last year. But what may surprise you because it surprised me, is that we're talking about the 2.7 liter V6 from Chrysler. And honestly, my blender makes more power than it these days. Yeah, because it was pumping out about 170 horses. And the issue was this little motor that couldn't was offered in Chrysler's cars weighing upwards of 3,500 pounds. And not only did it not have power, it was the sludge machine. This engine was notorious for leaky oil problems. And everyone and their mom has reported that the oil and coolant leaks mixed to form a goo be sludge. I mean, just look at this masterpiece of a disaster. If that happened to one of mine, I'd be fuming. Pound for pound, this engine is probably the worst on this list. So next up is a motor from a company that prides itself on reliability, and it's easily the one that you didn't see coming. Yes, Toyota is here with a disaster piece. Well, it's, it's actually their luxurious division, Lexus who introduced to the world an anemic 2.5 liter V6 in their otherwise sporty looking and kind of good looking IS250. And you know, as my mom tells me, Brad, looks can only get you so far. And it is true. And not only was this motor so slow it couldn't get out of its own way, but it was so heavily constricted by emission systems that it got horrible gas mileage to boot. You know, personally, I really like the IS250 and I have a soft spot for the earlier Lexus IS300, which had a freaking 2J motor in it. We all had high expectations for this one and Lexus undeniably under delivered on it. Just like how Chevy under delivered in the early 2000s, specifically with the Cavalier and the S10 pickups. I mean, can you believe that both of these vehicles had the exact same motor? So check it. It's early 2000. Turns out Y2K doesn't kill us all. And Faith Hill just released the epic song Breathe, which to this day is one of Trav's absolute favorites. Just breathe. So guess what happens? GM rolls out this 2.2 liter Ecotec in the Saturn LS1. And so these early engines had a design flaw that made it so the timing tensioners didn't receive enough oil at idle. If that happens, boom, your engine just jumps gears and throws the engine timing out of sync. And time for a new motor. Of course, after about six years, GM, they figured it out. But those early 2000s with that 2.2 liter pff, are a hard pass. Just like this angry Dorito in our next car, the Mazda RX-8. Okay, quick question for the class. Who loves the FDRX-7? And uh, I have it on good authority that the RX-7 overdrive video is just around the corner. So subscribe so you're notified. Anyway, so when the RX-8 came out, we thought it was gonna be just a little bit better. Not worse than its older sibling, right? But man, the Uber high performance rotary is one of the most unreliable on this list. It's known as the Renesis, or better known as the <laughs> Apex Seals. This power plant was doomed from the start. Tuners always picked the last gen RX-7 motor because the Renesis was just bad. And the Apex Seals are thinner on the RX-8 than they are on the 13B in the RX-7. So yeah, they're lighter and work more efficiently higher in the revs. <laughs> doesn't matter when they're extremely unreliable. Just like this truck motor. Because when you think of diesel engines from Ford, you think power, reliability. But the six liter diesel just isn't powerful or reliable. It failed a lot. More than your boy's dating career, honestly. You see, the power stroke had this oil cooler that was inside the block, which could get clogged up over time and the coolant and oil passages would choke up, which reduced the flow of coolant to the EGR cooler and overheat, which would make it blow head gaskets or make the EGR cooler leak. Most of the time, it would make both happen. Then there's the fuel injector problem and the turbocharger problems. And the there were a host of other issues with this motor. And although there are some diehard six liter Famoco fans out there, you're better off not being one of them. Just like being the owner of a CVT transmission in your Nissan, which is today's idealist honorable mention, baby. The CVT has managed to collect some, um, some shifty opinions amongst automotive enthusiasts. Some love it for its smooth and hassle-free power transmission, while others absolutely hate it for taking away one of the most enjoyable parts of driving a car, <laughs> shifting gears. And the debate 
it's still going on. But what is actually not debatable is that the Nissan Jatco CVTs are not an ideal example to win over the haters. It is today's honorable mention, but mostly because they actually work fine, at least until they hit around 100K miles, but they turn your car into an appliance like a dishwasher. It just either works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't work, then we're probably talking about a couple of motors that are provided by Japanese automaker Subaru. And we all know that boxer engines go brap. But the naturally aspirated Subi motors don't go stew, stew, stew. And without that iconic sound, they also drink a ton of synthetic oil. Yes, the two liter and 2.5 liter versions that forego turbos from the 2011 to 2015 era burn excessive amounts of oil thanks to defective piston rings. And what sucks is that Subaru knew about the problem, but they decided to let it slide at the cost of consumers. Kind of like that Ford's power shift issue. Yeah, just power shifted onto the buyers. And guess what? Subi dealers ended up spending a lot of money on warranty work replacing short blocks. So if you ever thought Subarus were unreliable, well, you weren't wrong. Just like you aren't wrong if you subscribe because, well, you made it this far in this video. There are a bunch of other duds out there we'd love to talk about. So let us know if you know of something down in the comments below. Oh, and check out my favorite series over here, Blinker Fluid, because you didn't need to know until you needed to know. You can binge watch that right over here. I'm Brad, this is Ideal. Promise me one thing, keep living the ideal lifestyle.